Hello, uh, thank you for being with me today. My name is Gwendolyn Van Sant. <coughs> I serve as the vice chair of the town of Great Barrington Du Bois Legacy Committee. I'm also the CEO and founding director of Bridge. I wanna welcome my two guests today and I'd love for you to introduce yourselves, the affiliations you hold, the multiple affiliations that you hold in Berkshire County and what, and describe your leadership here. And so I'm gonna start with Dr. Francis Jones Sneed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Francis Jones Sneed and um, I've lived about 25 years in the Berkshires. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus of history at Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. And I've been working on local history in the Berkshires of uh, detailing uh, Black American lives for about 15 years, 15 of my 25 years that I've been here. And it's been very exciting. And so I am the co-chair of the African American Heritage Trail with Rachel Fletcher and also um, an associate editor of the uh, Trail Guide for African American History. I am a member of the NAACP, uh, the education uh, co-chair, uh, and I'm also a member of the board of Clinton Church Restoration, um, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more about, I think, uh, about the W.E.B. Du Bois uh, reading of the Souls of Black Folks uh, that uh, was spearheaded this year. Uh, and I'm also a member of the board of the Samuel Harrison Society. So, um, that's it. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> thank you for everything. Um, and Dennis Powell. Yes, good afternoon and thank you, Gwendolyn. Uh, yes, as Gwen said, my name is Dennis Powell. I'm a retired culinary educator, a food service hospitality consultant. Presently, I am the president of the Berkshire County branch of the NAACP. I serve on the executive committee of the New England Area Conference, uh, NEAC, and I'm a member of the Educational Committee of NIA. I am vice chair of the Clinton Church Restoration Project. I serve on the board of the Railroad Street Youth Project, the Du Bois Educational Series. I'm a member of the Pittsfield Public School Education Committee and also serve on the Pittsfield Licensing Board. And in my spare time, I enjoy my three beautiful grandchildren. Madison, Jackson, and Lolo. Thank you. And I just said it, but I really do want to thank you because you both are retired and I think your schedules and lives are more full than when you had full-time <laughs> careers. So thank you so much. <laughs> um, so 2020, in my view, has been a phenomenal year to lift up Dr. Du Bois's legacy and all the work that has been done in our county over decades. Um, it seems to have come to me at a time when the nation needed to have reminders about activism and what it takes and the long road to justice. I'm wondering if each of you can talk to our audience today about, about um, your view on the local and national perspective of what this work is in the Berkshires right now. Dennis? Francis, <laughs> Well, for me, it, it, it's, it's crucial uh, because prominent black leaders throughout our history, you know, and I'm gonna name a few because I think this is important because these are names we don't really hear about. Mm -hmm. And you know, for the longest, we grew up not even knowing who W.E.B. Du Bois was and he lived right in our community. Yeah. Uh, but there are many other like uh, Daisy Gates and Bates, George Thomas Downing, James Leonard Farmer, Marcus Garvey, Fannie Lou Hamer, Dr. George Edmund Haynes, Malcolm X, Isaac Meyer, Philip Randolph, uh, Josephine St. Pierre Rufus, Mary Burton Talbert, Marietta W. Stewart, Walter Francis White, Whitney Moore Young, Jr. Dr. Martin Luther King, Frederick Augustus Douglas, and of course, w Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. They've all been fighting this long road to justice for over 400 years and still continue. We have all witnessed the injustice that occurred when black people protest versus white people mob rule. Thank you. Yes. 
I, I think that 2020 has been um, uh, a productive time for uh, the recognizing of W.E.B. Du Bois in Berkshire County. Um, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long fight um, to get the recognition um, that he has today with the town signs outside of Great American saying the home of W.E.B. Du Bois. Um, and, um, and of course the school naming. Uh, what the Clinton Church Restoration has been doing is um, taking uh, The Souls of Black Folks, the classic book written by uh, uh, Du Bois in 1903 and inviting black scholars to come on board um, and talk about each chapter. So we have 14 weeks of uh, talking about the souls of black folk with scholars all from all over the United States. And it has been very, very fulfilling, you know, that we've had an audience of 50 plus uh, each week um, uh, actually delving into that book. Um, and it's something that I had been wanting to do a long time. And I think that this is setting the stage for Clinton Church Restoration and what um, we ultimately want to do is to start an African-American Heritage Center, which centers Du Bois and other African-Americans from the Berkshires. Because Du Bois, of course, is a, a best known African-American, uh, but one that is little known by most residents of the Berkshires. Um, and, but then we have Samuel Harrison in Pittsfield, who was a chaplain of the Massachusetts 54th. We have James Weldon Johnson, who had a summer home um, down in, in Great Barrington. And so the, the person who wrote the uh, national, Black National Anthem, you know, spent the summers in the Berkshires. We have uh, Elizabeth Freeman uh, uh, called Mom Beck, who sued for her freedom before uh, the Constitution of Massachusetts was ratified and won. Um, and then we had uh, James Vanderzee from Lenox who was the uh, photographer for the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, Agrippa Hall, who was uh, participated in um, the uh, Revolutionary War uh, with the Polish general Thaddeus Kosciuszko. And those names kind of go on and on and on because of course we have the second black <laughs> woman, Stephanie Wilson from Pittsfield who went up in uh, the NASA space uh, rocket and is uh, about to do it again, uh, you know, in 2022. Uh, so all of those luminaries, all of those black folks that we can kind of name are just the tip of the iceberg of the people that we can name. And so starting with W.E.B. Du Bois, if we can get him recognized um, and, and especially into the school systems where uh, students will be uh, able to know him, then we can also get the others known and, and, and kind of my goal is to look at the curriculum and to change the curriculum in Berkshire County for Berkshire County students so that they know the full history of the Berkshires and not just the history that has been uh, written. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing the work at Clinton Church and the vision there. Um, as the president of our Berkshire County branch at NAACP, can you talk a little bit about the correlation there with Dr. DeVoice? <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, you know, we have uh, Dr. Du Bois to thank for the fact that the NAACP, one of the oldest uh, civil rights organizations, um, is still thriving today. He was one of the, the, the founding fathers, and it just showed uh, where his mind was and how important uh, he knew this work was going to be. And it, what, what I'm so amazed about uh, uh, Dr. Du Bois and especially the, the education that I've received from Dr. Francis Jones Sneed with, these, with this lecture series is it's like he knew we were going to be in this place and time yeah. that we're faced with right now. Mm -hmm because he addresses this. That's the genius of who he was. So for me and for the NAACP, it was important for us that once uh, we rediscovered Du Bois, <laughs> that 
that it was important. How do we keep his name forever present? Mm -hmm. So we establish the W.E.B. Du Bois Freedom Fund Award. Yeah. Uh, we give out, uh, we had two missions here. Uh, we wanted to recognize and bring forth, as Francis was saying, other luminaries in our history Mm -hmm. So one way we've done that is we try to find people within our community whose work sort of mirrors uh, the work of someone in our history. Mm -hmm. So those awards we give out only once, like we've given out the Shirley Chisholm Award yeah. to uh, Queen Mother Mabel Hamilton. Yes. <laughs> who is the matriarch of our community. Yeah. So she's the only one that will ever receive that award. That's we good. gave the Mary McClune Bethune Award to Shirley Edgerton. Yeah. You know, because of her work in education and, and, and work with young, young, young women, uh, putting them on the right, right path and to uh, giving them that rites of passage as mm -hmm. they're developing. Um, but the only award we decided that we would give out on an annual basis is the W.E.B. Du Bois Award. And we do that so that we will forever keep his name present <laughs> in our community. And, you know, uh, Dr. Francis Jones Sneed was one of the recipients of that award. Um, uh, Whitney Battle Baptiste. Yeah. Um, um, Rachel Fletcher. Rachel, wait, actually, Rachel Fletcher received it this year. This year, yeah. Okay, for all of her work. Um, prior to her receiving it was um, Dr. Homer Mead. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm, I'm so glad that someone has a memory. <laughs> that's good. Mine seems to be. I'm <laughs> seem to be having the senior moments. But, so this is really important, you know, and like Francis, I too think that, you know, once we're able to get Du Bois in the schools, we need to bring forth all of the pioneers. Yeah. Um, you know, I watched uh, Percy um, Julian's uh, documentary on, on uh, PB. Yes, mm -hmm. and here's this incredible scientist who developed the cortisone that we're all able to walk a little better once that rheumatism sets in on us, <laughs> which we're all about to get it at some time or another. Uh, it takes no prisoners, and so Incredible people like this, who even though with their genius minds suffered uh, racism and weren't allowed to really benefit from their brilliance. Mm -hmm. You know, had his home set on fire in, in, in Chicago and, and, and so on. So just really amazing uh, people that we need to learn about. We need to really change the way history is taught. Uh, and this is a goal and, and, and mission of definitely the Berkshire County branch of the NAACP, uh, which is why I'm so glad to have Dr. Francis Jones Sneed as our co-chair of that committee, so. All right, thank you. Um, that's really, I think both of you talked about the importance of education, which leads into my next question, the picture behind me that I'm so thrilled about, that the middle school has finally been um, renamed after Dr. Du Bois. So the two big things in Great Barrington this year was the final posting of this name, the vote happened last year, um, but also the town of Great Barrington in January voted to consider Du Bois's birthday, Du Bois Day, and make it a holiday for the town. So that's been sanctioned by proclamation by the select board. So I'm wondering if you can sort of reflect on what does that mean very specifically for our local Berkshire Black community 
and also the virtual community at large. I, th I think that um, it means that this is a beginning. Mm -hmm. um, that indeed, I think that every black citizen in the Berkshires, uh, whether they live in Great Barrington or not, is very proud to know that W.E.B. Du Bois's name is now on a public school. And I think he would smile because of his interest in education. I mean, that was what he was really, really interested in. And taking a day of recognizing a day as Du Bois's day, I think is another, um, um, another path that, um, that we are very pleased with. And we are pleased with that as a beginning, but we want more. And you know, we want to change that curriculum so that we know that people will know who Du Bois is and not that he's just a name on a school or celebrating a day, but exactly who is this man and what are the kinds of things that he wanted to achieve and do some action kinds of plan, be very activist in our community with changing um, uh, the education, looking at um, uh, food hunger, looking at the environment, looking at the political base, looking at all of those kinds of things that the boys really cared about. And uh, I think Dennis has it right. The man was always ahead of his time. He was a genius child. He grew up as a genius child in Great Barrington and, and went on to become a, a man of genius who always was a step ahead of the progress that African-Americans were making in this country, asking questions, pushing the buttons, making sure that we you know, go to the next step. So when we read his books today, and we said, how could Du Bois be so right on point in 1903 and right on point in 2021? Because he was a genius man. And we need to recognize this man for what he was doing. So great beginning, great stuff. But we <laughs> have to double the interest, double the impact that is felt in the Berkshires as well as nationally. Because I think that if we make the right decisions here in the Berkshires, we will have people coming into the Berkshires to learn about who is, where did the boy, where was he born? What was the impact that this had on his life? So. Good, good start, you got it. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> I should have went first. <laughs> no, but Francis is absolutely right. But you know what it means to me, Gwendolyn? We have given, finally given our children a role model. Yes. This is the problem in our black community all over our country. Because history was not taught true history, it took away all of the role models. And it was an injustice, not just to black children. It was an injustice to all children. I mean, if white young girls and boys grew up knowing the contribution of black people, other than slaves, dope dealers, and criminals, where would we be as a world today? Yeah. If they realize many of what we enjoy today, the tools that medicine was given were the product of black doctors, black scientists, black geniuses like Du Bois, where would we be as a nation today? So this is why education is so important. This was Du Bois's, I mean, I don't think there is a black uh, person in our history that did not understand the importance of education. They knew that was the one thing that once we got it, you could not take it from us. And that's why they kept it from us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I agree. I, I mentioned a little bit before this interview that I had the opportunity to talk to some young black students in Great Barrington and they really echo what you said. It gives us a vision. It lets us know 
I heard one of the young men say, I don't have to be right. It took them 150 years to understand the voice. So he said, I just need to work hard in what I believe in. And I was like, oh, yes, but that's exactly the message that we need the young people to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like Francis said, you know, look, uh, Samuel Harrison, that's someone else that we really don't, and, and, and Samuel Harrison fought for equal pay <laughs> before it even became famous to anyone else. <laughs> you know, he refused, he, as, as the chaplain uh, of the Massachusetts 54th, as an officer, he was able, he was the only one that was paid. Mm -hmm. and he refused his pay until all of his regiment were paid. And we know they weren't paid until after the war, but he fought until they all got paid. So th these are long histories of activism. Yes. It just didn't happen overnight. Every one of our heroes and sheroes in our history were all activists fighting for equal rights and equal justice. And here we are, 2021, still fighting that same battle. Yeah. Thank you. So you two, you shared quite a bit, but we're closing out the interview right now. So in summary, what do you want to leave our audience with when we're thinking about Du Bois's legacy and 2021? I want to leave them with humanity. Mm. I want everyone to just think about humanity. Yeah. Because if we do that and we look at each other as human beings entitled to all the rights of humanity yeah. and we follow that as our guide, we will be a better world. Amen to that. That's simple to me. Ashe, Ashe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to uh, leave for, and especially um, the present generation, um, or the Black Lives Matters generation. I think that they are so courageous, and I applaud them for wanting to push forward. And that's what we need: um, is um, we have to be the change we want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, if we see something, we have to do it. Um, and so I, I leave with you. Activism is everybody's individual rights to kind of do it. There are no leaders out here who can do it for us. We have to do it for ourselves. Yeah. And we have to remember the great words of John Lewis. We have to make trouble good trouble. trouble. And yeah. that's what activism is all about. Yes. <laughs> Right. And John, I'm sure, is smiling somewhere. Right. <laughs> talking about his good trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you boys like to cause a lot of good trouble. Right. I keep imagining <laughs> what it must have been to have that man walking around, right? Oh, God. Yes. If I could have five minutes with him. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both very much. This is thank really you. informative. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh.